Okay, so this one is about the cube section, and that's the category two in the uh, semester. And as I said, you should have printed out this page, which is the um, just a sketch page to do your different sections of the face of the cube. Uh, you should have printed out this page, which gives you uh, cross-section of the cube along its median line. Uh, essentially, it's showing you uh, the, the cube cut in half. Okay. Then the next page, and you need this because you need the two dimensions on the inside, on these sections here, to figure out the inside part. Uh, then the third page that you need is page five, and that shows the cross-section along the diagonal of the face. So essentially that's cutting the cube along this line and then looking at what we have. Okay, that's the face. And if you look at the drawing, that's what this um, diagram is showing. Okay, you slice through the diagonal and then you open it and these are the dimensions. These are two dimensions of that particular plane and they're repeated here in this drawing. Okay, and I wrote this down very specific, very precisely. So you know, if you want it to be like nitpicky, it's uh, this particular one is like two and fifty-three sixty-fourths. And believe it or not, you can actually measure that. Um, these are the fancy rulers that I've been talking about, uh, called shader precision rules, rulers, and it's got decimal inches, which is kind of nice. Uh, picus, inches, and uh, millimeters, and the millimeters are nice, you even have half a millimeter inside. show you. So that's pretty nice. Uh, that's how big a millimeter is, and this one you can see a big, a 60, oh, sorry. So right there, the little mark there, that's 164th, okay? But for your own, uh, just make sure when you, when you print it, measure this square. Make sure the square is four inches, okay? Make sure it's four inches both ways because some printers, you know, scale one direction and they don't scale on another one. And if you want to double check your ruler against mine to see if it's accurate, you can do that. Just bring it and we'll, we'll, we'll measure against this one. We'll put it side by side. Because I've seen like cheap rulers off as much as like a 32nd and a 16th of an inch. Okay. So essentially we want to divide the face of the cube into two parts, okay? One and two, and I have a couple of rules on how to do that to make it simpler than it, than it um, in other words, not too complicated. Um, Then the steps that we need to do are quite simple. Uh, the first one is that after you do your first section, you flip it, rather you mirror it, okay? Just like that, okay? And once you have that mirror image, you rotate it around this point Oh, by the way, you start at the midpoint right here. And then, once you have this, ro this uh, mirroring, you rotate this whole thing by 180 degrees. Okay. And you get the total. Um, interesting enough, you could have done this 
uh, rotation by doing two flips. So I could have flipped it this way and then this way, and I could have gotten the same shape. So essentially, two flips uh, equal 180 rotation. Uh, and so we have now the uh, outside, okay, because this connects this edge connects to the other edge right here. And the reason we start in the middle here is because when we connect this edge to this edge, this correspond, okay? These two spots correspond, otherwise it gets a little messy. Um, okay, so total is 16 by 4 inches. And essentially, we just add the square at the top and the bottom. Now, like I said, if you want to do one with three pieces instead of two, because essentially this becomes, you know, one half of your cube, right? That's the fold out for one half. Uh, you can call this a net as well, too. Um, and then that's the other half. Uh, you can apply, what you can do is section it this way and then also use these other two squares and you can come up with three pieces instead of two. And we'll see how that can be done. I forget if it's in this PDF. But. Uh, then what we want to do is we're going to start uh, numbering or lettering our points on our section based on um, the master uh, template. Okay, so I'm just naming these number, these spots here. And once again, when you're looking at this, you're looking at this section, okay? because as a, it will need them as reference points. The same thing, the same thing for this, okay? We'll, we'll need to mark these points. Uh, let me just quickly, essentially what this picture is, is that if you have a square like this, and you want to do a cross section from that corner, it's a little darker. Um, Right? You're cutting this way. And then what you do is you build this rectangle. Okay, where this is four. But this length, this other side is the length of the diagonal of the square. Okay, so what I did was I basically did this step for you. In other words, you could have done this drawing to figure it out, but I just did it. Um, it's, it's what you might call like a cross-section or like an auxiliary view. Remember the auxiliary view in the quiz? It's kind of like that similar um, angle. And we're going to need these letters because just to keep track of our shape. Okay? Essentially, we're going to make a kind of a die to uh, you know, cut out to make our, all our modules all the same. And it's important to keep track of the letters because it can be a little tricky and confusing. Uh, so when we have this marked up in our uh, square, then we need to go from here to the center of the cube, which in this case I, I put it here, but it's, if you do your isometric, that corresponds to the center of the cube. And then what we need to do is connect all the points on the outside to that center. Okay. So essentially, we're going to need to figure out what these triangles are. And there's simply a combination of lines on the outside and lines on the inside. And the lines on the inside that I've already, I'm already giving you, so we just need to keep track of which ones, you know, which, which is which. Uh, and for this, you'll need the compass. Okay. Here I was showing how all these points, we're calling them B, and I did a little diagram that shows um, kind of a little paper airplane uh, sketch. In other words, if you had a cross here in the middle of your face, then these are all B points. Uh, and it's kind of, again, an intuitive thing. You don't have to really prove it because of the symmetry of the cube, you know, if that's the center 
these are all going to be equally distance, uh, distance from the center. Okay. So essentially in your drawing you would start building this inside part by drawing a line and say, okay, C to B, right? And then I need to find what we call this, we call this Z. And we need to make the first triangle probably with a compass. And then we keep moving, so B to B, that's another piece. And then, uh, actually, we don't know what that is until we do this other one. Okay, and so forth. We finish the side, the uh, shape from the inside. Uh, sorry, that's not showing up very well. Okay, it's actually uh, not that complicated when you start doing it. This is another way of looking at you got the outside, and you've got a series of triangles that are going to go all to the same point. So some of the sides of these triangles are going to be uh, shared sides. Okay, so in a cube like this, uh, what you're doing is you're figuring out all these triangles. And sometimes actually tri similar triangles, I mean, um, pairs of triangles fall on the same plane. So these two, for example, in this construction, they're shown as two pieces, but this could really be one single piece. Okay. Um. Okay. Once we figure out what that shape is that defines the inside, eventually we're going to have a to, we're going to have to draw, um, I forget which drawing it is, but uh, to scale the fold out. And this just shows how to half it. Essentially, once you have it, all you have to do is figure out the midpoint of any of these lines and then using parallel lines to the edges. Okay, so this is a line. You, you draw a line that's parallel from those points and you get the smaller version. Once again, this is an attempt to break it down once we have um, our parts, our lines. Uh, so from C to B, from B to B, from B to C, those we have, so we have these major lines. And we need to come up with the other, uh, well, we have them, so we look for this information on the other drawing. Okay, so for example, D is here. So you would take the compass and measure this part. And here I don't have D at all, so let's take another one. I only have C and B. So it's the other one. Right, so this is C and B. So to go to the middle, how do I do that? Um, first I draw this line, C to B, like that. And then with a compass, I measure uh, here. I look for C and I look for B and I measure them. And then I do a little arc. Um, I'm going to do a real one in a sec. Uh, and then it's just a, combine, a combination of all these triangles. But let me just go through these and then I'll do one for real. This is more um, showing how, once again, if you're trying, if this is the face of the cube and this is D and this is A, so how do you find D 
again, you look at your cube and you look here and you say, okay, this is either this point or this point. So I might, I'm going to mark this line here. And what I'm trying to show here is a plane. to which these lines belong. Okay, so that's like a true dimension. That's why we do these sections. Uh, this is a little easier plane because it's on, you know, it's a plane that's parallel to the face of the cube. So again, I'm looking for, let's see, B or A. So that's B. And that's a, these spots right here. I don't know if you can see it, but this line is this section right here. Uh, let's see if I can show it. Yeah, so this is B. This is A. So that's what we're trying to draw right here. And also, just so happens that this particular triangle now it's already given in our drawing, in our section. Okay, so this square belongs to a larger plane that cuts through the uh, through the cube with a parallel, um, as a parallel plane to the face of the cube. Let's just do, I'll just do one triangle just to demo it so that, um, So we'll do this one example, okay? And this is, I'm just making this up, right? I don't know if the shape is exactly like that. Um, so A to D to Z, okay? Um, stop me at any time if, you know, it's not clear, okay? So this is a, you know, just a blank piece of paper or board, and um, although it's important that you that it be pretty good so that you can use it as a master, and so you just start out by drawing a simple line. Compass. Okay, so on the, on, the, on the actual face, we just measure it like this, okay? We just go from A to D, that, and then I, I take that measurement, okay? And I can do it this way. So I get these two spots. So now to find the true dimension of this triangle going to Z, I just simply refer to my, uh, to my template. And you look, it's, it's either in this one or in the other one. So A happens to be here. It also happens to be really simple because it's two inches because it goes from that midpoint to, the Z, to Z, okay? But nevertheless, just because I like to use my compass, I'm still gonna measure it with my compass. Uh, and I draw the first line, okay? Just like that. Okay, so now I, don't, I still don't know where exactly that center will be, but at least I know it's somewhere along this line. So I'm just going to draw it thick. Okay? So I know this line is AZ somehow. 
somewhere. Now to find where they cross, now I look for D. Right? And this is my spot, which is on the edge of the cube. And to find D, I have to go to my other section. Right here, and I plot that line. By plot, I just mean I measure it to Z. Okay? So now, pointing on D, I do the other arc. Okay. And now where they meet, because triangles, if you know the three sides, there's only one possible given triangle for those three sides. Um, where they meet, that's your other spot. So that's my first shape. So when I do this drawing, I want to do it on nice paper, and I don't want to cut it up. I want to be able to use it as a master. So what we'll do is we'll use a, a pin to transfer those spots onto, like, the actual construction paper. Um, to do the others, you just keep going, okay, essentially. Uh, using what you know and then measuring what you don't know and moving around. So that in the end, you have a shape that is kind of like a fan, okay? And it's pretty much proven that you cannot make, if you, have a, uh, if you have a convex shape like this and also concave shapes going in and out, it's pretty much proven that you cannot do the entire surface, this entire surface out of one single piece because sooner or later uh, it would overlap, okay? So what you have to do is make it out of different pieces. Oh yeah, this shows how to do a um, one out of three pieces. I'll just quickly show it. Uh, there's different ways you can do it, but if this is your uh, square, again, what I uh, let's see, how did I do this? I think I turn, flip this part, like that, come on, no, that's wrong, let's just see what we did here, yeah, okay, so we, we actually pivot in this point 180 degrees, and then move this one here. And I can't remember now if this actually works, but it's a different way of doing it so that you make up your modules, you make three of them, uh, right? Because you have... You have six faces. So if you start out with two, two pairs of squares, then you come up with three modules. Uh, so if somebody's interested and they want to try it right away, that's fine. Uh, you could try it after you do the half. Um, uh, once again, though, you will need the half one to do the perspective later on. So this is, uh, this is more, um, you know, advanced, I guess. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, what we'll do is we'll use pin pins to mark uh, the colored paper, and then we're going to need to use little tabs to uh, glue it all together. Uh, the the two uh, piece construction is kind of it's very practical to leave this open uh, so that you can get inside while you're gluing it, um, and then close it at the very end. Oh yeah, this is another case in which, like this particular one, if you have a section that goes all the way to the edge, let's say to the bottom or the top, uh, that gets a little tricky if you construct it um, like this because 
Uh, all of a sudden you have pieces that are kind of like dangling in the air. So an alternative construction for that particular case scenario is to do it uh, to do it around the top or the bottom. The disadvantage is you can't get in as you're building it. So uh, we can talk about how to you know get around those problems, but. This still shows pretty much how you need to, absolutely you need to start at the, at the uh, middle point, okay? So that you end up at the middle point at the other end. Uh, you know, everything is possible and what happens is you might do it and you realize, oh, it fits perfectly, but there may be um, problems with it. For example, I just had one that fit exactly, but it wasn't exactly um, the same piece. So these are all the same. These two are the same. These two are the same. Oh, I can't find the wrong one now, so I'll skip it. Okay, so let's take a little break because I'm going to talk about the different drawings then that will document the, uh, the project. Um, oh yeah, this is actually good. This shows how when you have the inside part, um, all your flaps, all your dimensions have to you know, match your uh, sections on the, on the outside of the cube. So one way to do this is to um, to take a trace, and I'm almost done here, I just want to show you this because this is kind of important. Um, so now I want to see if all these parts fit here. So the way to do it is you just turn it around like that, and you can see now that fits there, that fits this part. This fits this segment, and that fits this segment. Okay, so it's not arbitrary the way it's it's positioned. Okay, this is the last drawing of this set. Um, so we're going to use two different colors for the outside and the inside of the cube. Okay.